Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. Um, you might be looking on camera and seeing this weird angle uh, that's not straight on like we normally do. Um, you're probably wondering what the hell, <laughs> why is this weird angle? I don't know how many of you have maybe been aware of this book, X-Men, Double XL, Jim Lee. This is the biggest fucking book you will ever see. Let me, um, just for context, Comics are drawn typically on paper that is 11 by 17. So here it is. That is 11 by 17. And a comic book itself. Here's a regular comic book right here. Just to give you some scale. I had to reset my little camera phone holder here completely out, up off the its normal mounting point so I could at least get this whole thing in frame. So... Regular size comic book. I mean, it's like four of them put together, basically. Like, let me see. Yeah, right? Take four comics and then put them side by side. And that's how big we're talking right here. I saw somebody else mention this online. And I had I found a place that had it for a pretty good price. I got it, had it for about a year and a half now. I wish I could remember exactly how much I paid. It was something like 50 bucks. Not a huge amount. It is so fucking huge. Look at this thing. But it's basically all the issues of Uncanny X-Men and the X-Men series that Jim Lee did just in this massive format. So it is huge. I mean, that's just my damn hand here, right? Like, look how big this is. I know I've gone over the size, but it's pretty freaking awesome. Though it's not, the problem is that when you got a book this big, where the hell do you keep it? Where the hell do you store it? You know, it's basically a table, it feels like. It's so goddamn big, but it was, I just, I had to get it. And I'm not mad that I did, though if I could be given the choice, I'd rather have the Jim Lee Artist Edition, which is not as big as this, but it's a bunch of his black and white artwork from these these books. That would be much more interesting and you know I dwell on some of these pages a little bit more but since it's such a weird angle it's not really like the best way to view it you can't really see it that well I just thought I'd kind of showcase it here and another problem with the book is because it's so big at close inspection the artwork starts to get pixelated I don't know what resolution they were able to get their original reproductions of this artwork from but there's several places where when you're looking at it up close it's really pixelated not not really but enough that you notice and it kind of ruins the experience a little bit so what's the point of making a giant fucking book like this when it's not the best possible reproduction maybe it is maybe this is the best they could do because it's not like you're taking normally you do original artwork on that 11 by 17 board and then you're reducing it. But this is taking that artwork and making it bigger. So unless you have really high resolution scans of the original artwork, you know, it's kind of a pain in the ass. I get it. But it's just kind of a fun little unique artifact that's out there in the world. If you like all these old Jim Lee comics, this is some of the best stuff that he did. Got the covers in there. It's just so huge. This is some of the my earliest memories of X-Men was all this stuff. It is really good. I'm going to have to go over these issues. I've got several of them in their regular comic book size that we want to, we'll have to go over. Um, you know, let's keep flipping. This is a big ass book because like you can see how thick it is. Like. There's a lot of material in this thing. So, there's a lot to look at. Again, I wish I could have a better angle on it, but I just, I couldn't find a way to uh, showcase it better. But it's such a big canvas, it's so crazy. I'll set this, it takes up almost my entire drawing table here. There's not much surface area left. It's so huge. And I usually just have it sitting on the floor next to my table over here and I, I'll refer to it sometimes and <coughs> excuse me and it's always fun to go through especially seeing it this big size but 
and it doesn't really show you very well here, here, but like I said, a lot of times the artwork kind of loses some of its finesse because it's being blown up and you're losing a lot. But it's good stuff. It's, it's a fun little thing to have, to especially see Jim Lee's artwork blown up. I've talked about this before, I believe. Either I meant to, I did or I meant to. We're taking these old comics when they were on newsprint and the way the colors looked on newsprint, they looked perfect. But when you try to reproduce them on this big, nice, modern, glossy paper and take those basic flat colors and put them on this glossy paper, it doesn't look as good. It looked better on newsprint. It just kind of loses some of its charm and its appeal. Um, and that's unfortunate. This, I did a review on this, this Uncanny X-Men number 269. Um, Rogue in the Savage Land. This has become, well, actually now it's my second most highest viewed video. My my video of Cyber Force from like three days ago is now my most highest viewed video at 600 views. But this is right behind it. People liked watching the Jim Lee Rogue video. And when you take that comic, you can blow up, you know, Rogue dropping out. She's basic, she's naked. I mean, that's a, that's a great comic to blow up to big full size. So... We did a whole page-by-page walkthrough on this comic right here. And we'll stop at the pages that are more interesting than some of the others. Like, you know, Rogue when she's in the Savage Land. That's fun. And one of the best images of Magneto by Jim Lee ever. That right there. It looks great. I also liked that they threw in some scans of the original black and white artwork. What sucks is they're really small. I mean, they're roughly ugh, comic book size. In fact, even smaller than a comic book by just barely. It's, you know, I'd like to see these blown up. But I guess that's what those artist editions are for. So what am I pissing and moaning about? Um, but yeah, we've we've... This is all just like classic stuff. We've all seen this. It's great artwork by Jim Lee. I'm trying to just get through it because if it's if it's hard to see, I, you know, there's no no sense in dwelling too long on too much of this. Um, threw in this random pin up here. I think it's just Jim Lee doing his own inks and modern colors. This is a the resolution on this is pretty good because it's been colored by a guy. In, in modern days, and um, they got a rear, rear, real high-resolution version of it. So there's not really any kind of pixelation going on here like there is in this, which, again, you can't see through the camera, but that's okay. This cover, there, this is a great high-resolution reproduction of this, uh, this cover, this issue. This looks great. That really came out really good. And this was a great issue. Oh, there's also a great... Um, colorist Thomas Mason I follow him on Instagram they had him do or he just I mean obviously I guess they hired him to do this because it's in here but he did a recoloring of it this looks good but I don't know that it's better than the original sometimes those original kind of flat colors work best but he did a pretty goddamn good job on that added a planet in the background and his own little extra shit but that's fine um but let's get through this. Let's get to some of the uh, the X Men number one because that's in here. This stuff is so huge, it's so crazy how big this is. I mean, look how big these characters are. They're huge. Yeah, it's one thing to take a splash page and then have them just be this massive. All classic Uncanny X-Men style. That's Wolverine gutting Professor X, except it's not Professor X. It's an alien, but he knew. Yeah. Yeah, big, colorful stuff everywhere. Let's get to... Uh... Man, look at that double page spread. I mean, <laughs> that's... It's so big, it's so colorful and just massive. It's just, it's great. I say it and then I have to go put this book down somewhere and store it. And uh, there's not really very many places that I've got to store something this big. But I've got it, so I'm stuck with it and that's just fine. 
This is one of my favorite scenes where Gambit took the deck of cards and charged them up and flicked them out onto the guy to blow him up. That came out. That, that was a really cool move. But yeah, lots of pages. Holy shit, it just keeps going on and on and on. Oh yeah, here we go. That big spread of the X-Men number one. At the Magneto cover, that was one, that's one, there and there, four issues, or four different covers for the same issue. So you wonder how it sold eight million copies. Well, that's part of the reason. Part of the reason is Jim Lee's artwork and the X-Men and their popularity at the time. Big giant shot of Magneto there. I did a whole breakdown of this X-Men number one already. So we don't need to dwell on this too much. But these big images that they do, it's just crazy to see them even bigger than before. Big splash pages of all the characters get a money shot looking awesome or badass or sexy or whatever is going on. So, I mean, if you read comics, you've seen all this stuff and I'm not showing you anything new, but uh, it looks good. It's crazy. I don't know if there's any more copies left because, uh, you know, like I said, I had this, I've had this for about a year and a half. I didn't know it existed until... I, I don't even remember where I saw it or how I came across it. Somewhere online, it was mentioned somewhere. And uh, so I'm like, you know what? I've got the money. I want that shit. Um, the different pinups are in the backs of the book. The big fold-out in the special edition. They, they threw it all in here. Got that giant head on Magneto right there. Good times. Ah, it's so colorful and it's just awesome to see it this big you know that's pretty badass i don't look through this too often and some pages i haven't paid too much attention to so I, i'm looking at some of these i'm like oh yeah i forgot how cool this was but uh let's keep tearing through it right You know, the first three issues, the final issue. I think it's everything that Jim Lee did with Chris Claremont is basically what's collected into here. If I um, if I understand correctly, because this isn't this issue three of X Men is not the last issue that Jim Lee did, but it is the last one that he did with Chris Claremont. So, well, we all know what goes on here. We've all read this. We know what how this goes, right? The X-Men are obviously going to end up triumphant. Magneto dies for the 100th time. But yeah, we're basically at the end. Next, Omega Red. Everyone thought they cared, and then we all realized that we didn't care. More pinups thrown in there. What else is in here? Oh, yeah. More uh, reproductions of the original artwork. These are cool, except they're so goddamn small. I want these big. The covers, the layouts for the the four tiered page that he was going to that he did some variations on him sketches are in the back of that x-men number one just a, on some stuff i've never seen i've never seen these things when i first got it so but there it is so yeah oh god it's so heavy Ugh. boom X-Men, uh, Double XL by Jim Lee. Um, God, I wonder if it has a price point on it. Oh, yeah. It was listed for $100. Like, that's printed on the book. I absolutely did not pay $100 for this. I, it is 50 bucks or 60 or something like that. I wonder if they were just trying to move out, move through, through some of their product. But I got one, and uh, it's a giant-ass book, but it's fun. So... I just thought I'd show that off. I've been pondering forever how I should do this, and this is the best I could come up with. So that's what I've got. So anyway, thanks for checking it out. Um, is this something you think you would actually want if you're a fan of artwork and Jim Lee's work? Like this giant-ass book like this? I mean, <laughs> it's so thick. It's so heavy, and my poor little drawing table here can barely contain it. Contain it. So that was a fun one. So anyway... Thanks for uh, joining me on this one, and uh, we will see you on the next one.